So I'm in Chamonix right now and I'm just about to visit a friend who's done a really nice little conversion. Um, it's the first time she's ever done something like this, so it'd be cool to see what she's done. Uh, I'm Carly, this is my van. It's a 2010 long wheelbase Renault Master, uh, which I converted over five weeks. Uh, so the van cost me about six and a half thousand and to fully kit it out cost me about four and a half, I think. Uh, so my kicking system is a can uh, stove and sink system. I've uh, got the two burner hob, uh, which I didn't actually wire up the, the sparker to it, but it kind of works out okay, don't really need it. And then I've got the, the sink with the tap with a small electric powered water pump. It's not overly powerful, but it didn't, doesn't really need to be. Fresh water and wastewater tank, but I try not to really use the wastewater tank too much because it's a nightmare, so empty and horrible. I used uh, 50 more Celotex in all the walls and because of the amount of headspace that I had and it didn't really need the van to be super tall, um, I put 50 mil, mil Celotex in the ceiling as well. And then in the floor there is 30 mil Celotex and then covering everything is the reflective foil over the top as well. Okay, so after I relayed the the floor that was initially in the van, I put down some liner over the top because it's super cheap and super easy to keep clean, really. So I've got my little battery-powered LED fairy lights just to make it so super cosy and like homely. These things here that uh, when I open this cupboard door, it stops them from falling all the way down and actually kind of doubles as like another shelf when it's open as my the kitchen area. I've got the little magnetic strip. It's just a super good way to keep all the things that I need to keep handy in one place without having to rummage through all the other storage for them because I kind of put this cupboard in that I just like bought because I thought it was right and about the right size and it's just part of it's turned out a little bit of a nightmare to get at all of this sort of stuff because it just gets really disorganized and it's just a bit of a pain. Um, but I thought it was kind of easier than making my own cupboard in that respect. Um, and then I've just got this little spice rack in the corner. It's just something that someone gave me and I was like, actually that could be kind of useful. Just stick some spices on there. It's really good keeping my toothbrush and toothpaste really handy. Uh, so I've got more storage in here. Like I wasn't really sure what to do with this sort of space because I didn't really know what else I could do with it. So I just came up with the idea of doing this chest storage. Okay, so in this cupboard I just keep like food and stuff really. Under here I've got three, well two boxes with food and stuff. So, so I've got like a, a box where I keep all like fresh stuff and things like that and a, another box where I keep like pasta and like sometimes it's not like convenient to get out the big water tank and fill it all up in one go. So I kind of keep these bottles and uh, fill them up and then it's easy to top up my main water. The whole of the underbed area is all storage. Um, obviously I've got my food storage at the front. Like, and the climbing gear and stuff is at the back and then in the middle is just kind of the stuff I don't need to get to so much. So I've got a Propex Heat Source 2000 heater. Um, it was probably the most expensive thing I put in the van but was by far the most valuable thing. I thought for ages about not putting a heater in. I thought, you know what, it'd be okay. I've got a good sleeping bag, but um, my gas system actually went wrong for a few weeks and having spending those few weeks without the heater made me realize how awesome it was that I put it in. And especially now being out in the Alps, I would in no way want to be living in a van without a heater. Um, so initially I came out to do a little bit of climbing because um, a friend sort of said oh why don't you come out to Chamonix and see how you get on. I originally came out for three weeks, um, started skiing again for the first time in 10 years and just kind of loved it and never really left. <laughs> Um, okay, so when I bought the van, it didn't actually have a window in it. And I knew I wanted to put one in, um, but the idea of cutting a hole in the side of my van absolutely terrified the life out of me. So the guys that I bought it off, were I managed to sort of convince them to put the window in for me, um, included in the price that I bought the van for. So that was a bit of a win, really. When I was um, doing the van, obviously I had plans to put the blind in quite early on to try and get it to sit in nice and tight behind here so that it didn't let any light in but I kind of got carried away with other bits and pieces and it kind of got left and then I realized when I came to actually put the blind in that it was a 
complete nightmare and I had to like build this whole like or try and build this whole system to try and keep the blind tight to the tight to the wall because of the shape of the van it just like falls in lets all the light in and didn't really work so then I ended up creating these sort of curtain things to just like try and hide that extra little gap that you get and yeah that was probably one of the biggest disasters of the van really <laughs> So all my electrics are kind of tucked away down here. I've got like this sort of wooden like panel that I've made just sort of covers up over here. I don't really, I haven't had the need to get at the electrics at any point just yet because everything's sort of been working okay. Um, but I've got, so I've got two 240 amp hour Vata ledger batteries, which just are the best thing that I could have spent money on because I have never seen my batteries much below sort of 90, 90 odd percent. Um, but I've got the solar charge controller, fuse box, the inverter, split charger, which obviously comes through from the front. Um, the electrics were the thing that absolutely terrified me the most. Um, when I first started looking at it, I just had no idea what I was doing. Um, but luckily, Nate's ebook like, actually made it that so much easier nice little diagrams to follow and just made everything a lot clearer than if I'd had to figure it out for myself I've got a full size 350 watt monocrystalline solar panel on the roof uh, so the combination of having the solar panel and the split charger means that I never have struggled for electricity I don't think I ever really will especially with the size of the batteries that I've got if if the solar's not keeping the batteries charged, like um, especially being out here over the winter where the panel's been covered in snow. So when I first started um, thinking about making the bed, I thought about a couple of different ideas that maybe I could have the bed lifting in some way so it was easier to access the storage underneath. Um, but when it came to actually making it, I realized that I was kind of overestimating my abilities. Uh, okay, so obviously I've got a full fixed bed with a full size double mattress on it. Um, I thought about the idea of putting the bed the other way, um, but I'm quite tall and I kind of wanted to actually have the space in the bed. So I went this way um, and then I created this bit down the side where I've got like bits of foam so it can essentially be an extension of the bed if needs be. I also have this shelf which was kind of like I just needed a little bit of storage that was easy to access. and. Um, that just like books and random stuff that didn't really have any other place that I, it isn't great, it's bungee corded in occasionally if I drive to like um, round mountain roads it will fall over and stuff goes everywhere, it's definitely something that I need to change uh, but I'm not quite sure what or how I'm going to do that just yet. <laughs> So I put the lighting on three separate rings. Uh, so I've got a switch here, um, a switch here for the main ring of lights, and then a switch by the door for the, these ones here. Like, I was really impressed actually how bright the LEDs are. I didn't expect them to be that bright, so that's why I initially put in four. I probably could have got away with less. Um, okay, so I, I've always kind of been into like having like stuff around like I've always loved fairy lights and that sort of thing and the hand build itself was actually finished and it came to like the decorating side of things like maybe I got a little bit carried away but I got like the prayer flags and I got candles and stuff everywhere the curtains at the back and just lots of little sort of trinkety bits around but for me that kind of makes it a bit more homely and it's a little bit more comforting it's a nice space for me to come back to and chill. Yeah, like it's it's pretty amazing really. I, sometimes I do just kind of sit back and I look at it and I'm like, well, I, I actually did this. Like, I never would have thought I would have been able to create something like this. I'd never done anything like this before in my life. I'd used a jigsaw once in my life. And the fact that it's turned out and to me, I think actually looks okay. But I'm actually really proud of what I've managed to do. So after I bought the van, I had already handed in notice on a uh, cottage that I was renting and so I was pretty much on a time scale to get the van converted uh, before I had to move out of the cottage, remove all my stuff. Uh, so I think I had five weeks um, event in the end that I spent converting the van, which was a bit of time pressure really. 
But so after the van was converted, I was still living in the UK, living in the van, working at the same job I'd been doing before I came out here um, for the winter um, with a plan of spending a couple of weeks and then, well, obviously that turned into more than just a couple of weeks and now I'm out here full time, pick up a little bit of work here and there to keep my costs covered but on the whole, like, it, I don't really need to be bringing in a lot of money anymore, I don't need a full time job because it's super easy to keep costs low while being in the van. So moving into the van was quite a, a big change for me. Obviously I've been living in a, a cottage. I'd accumulated a lot of stuff over the years, um, just pointless stuff that I didn't really need. And when I made the decision to move into the van, it, it was an experience to actually think, oh my God, I'm gonna have to get rid of a lot of this stuff. So I threw loads of stuff away. I gave away a load of stuff and just literally brought the bare minimum into the van. And it was really, quite an awesome experience to realise that I, you don't need all of this stuff. Uh, so the easiest thing about living in the van is the fact that if I want to get up and move and go elsewhere, it's super easy. If I want to be somewhere where I'm around lots of people, I can just park up somewhere busy. If I want to be completely by myself, I can just drive a little bit further away and have the evening and any time completely to myself and be super quiet. Not having to worry about having rent and council tax and bills and stuff hanging over you all the time um, knowing that you really are pretty much other than fuel and food as self-sufficient as you can be i probably do spend about 500 euro a month on living in the van um, i could probably do it for less um, particularly if i'm not really driving anywhere um, but the LPG is super cheap. If you live really cheap on food and don't go too crazy, then you could probably definitely do it for less. Okay, so the hardest thing about being in the van is, particularly in winter, is uh, obviously not having a shower or a toilet. But if you don't have like friends and stuff around where you can go and use a shower, then climbing gyms, swimming pools, those sorts of places, you can usually get pretty lucky. Sometimes campsites will have places where you can, they'll just let you go in, pay like a few euro and you can use the showers there. But I guess in the summer as well, you've got the option, you could always like find a nice lake or a river and use that as your option for showering as well. Um, if I didn't have the conversion guide, I don't think that I could have done this for a second. Um, as I said, there was no point in my life where I've ever had any experience of doing anything like this. And to have it all laid out in front of me in a nice little step-by-step, -step, this is what you need to do first, um, was just invaluable, really. Why does speaking become so hard as soon as there's a camera? <laughs> 